A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim Bismillah Alhamdulillah Wa Salatu Wassalamu Ala Rasulillah All praise is due to Allah And may His peace and blessings be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam My brothers and sisters in Islam My brothers and sisters who may not be of the Muslim faith My brothers and sisters in humanity I begin by greeting you saying Assalamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh May the peace and blessings of God be upon all of us We are discussing the concept of lifting the shackles and we stated last time that Islam is the theology of liberation and we said that one of the missions of the Prophet peace be upon him was to liberate people from their shackles there are two different types of shackles shackles that are imposed on us by others and shackles that we impose upon ourselves and the Prophet peace be upon him came to impose to 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 tell us about these and lift these both shackles from us and we concluded last time by quoting a beautiful um, a, a phrase that the Prophet peace be upon him has mentioned and that is كل الناس غادن فبائعن نفسه فمعتقها أو مبقها that at the beginning of every day people have two options some are going to liberate themselves and others are going to bring about ruin to themselves this idea of liberating yourself lifting the shackles from yourself is how many earlier Muslims also understood the mission of the Prophet peace be upon him for example, Rib'i ibn Amr, one of the companions who was invited by the emperor of Rome back then and he came to him and he inquired as to what is your mission, O you Muslim people? And Rib'i ibn Amr very eloquently stated that our mission is as follows. Jitna, he said, we came out العباد من عبادة العباد إلى عبادة رب العباد. We came so that we may take people out of worshipping people like them to worshipping their own true creator. We came out, he said, to take people from the injustice of other forms of life to the justice of Islam. We came out, he said, to take people out of the narrowness of this life to the vastness of this life as well as the hereafter. It is also said that Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, for example, when he was admonishing his son, he said, Ya Bunayya, inna Allah qad khalaqaka hurran, fala tasta'abid nafsaka li ghayrihi. He said, Oh my son, Allah has created you a free man. It would be very shameful that you enslave yourself to people other than your creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this idea, speaking of Islam as a theology of liberation, is not a new idea to us. It's not a novel idea. Rather, this is how early Muslims understood the teachings of Islam and the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we said Islam manifests itself in different forms such as there is no concept of original sin, no concept of uh, clergymen, none is to be worshipped but Allah. Not only that but Islam emphasizes that there should be no fear but from Allah. There should be no absolute obedience but to Allah. There should be no perfect love but to Allah. There should be no absolute submission but to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the idea of all of this is to what? It's to emphasize that you ought to be liberated by the way that you worship your creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. An interesting story, it was said uh, once that uh, a Hindu brother came to the mosque to see Muslims pray. And as they were praying, he was fascinated by these movements that Muslims do. And later on, after the prayers were over, he said, there is this phrase that you Muslims keep repeating every now and then, and I'm wondering, what does it mean? So people said, well, which phrase are you talking about? He said, this idea of Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, it seems that every time that you do any sort of move, you keep saying Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. That is the only part that I picked of your prayers. What does that mean? So somebody explained, that Allah Akbar means God is greater. And the man was so fascinated and he said, this is interesting, he said. He said, this is the best democracy I have seen in my life where all people would come together and then they would collectively as a group declare that nobody and only God is great and only God is greater than any that is out there. So our topic would be about this self-imposed shackles that we impose upon ourselves. These shackles come in many forms. 
as the Prophet, peace be upon him, it was his tradition that every time that he would wake up, he would make the following prayers. And these are beautiful, beautiful prayers. He would say, Allahumma, inni a'udhu bika. He said, Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you. And now remember this. This is the idea of lifting your shackles and liberating yourselves. He said, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-hamni wal hazan. He said, Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you. From being in the state of anxiety or being in the state of grief. Wal ajzi wal kasal. Or being incapacitated or being lazy. Or I seek refuge in you from laziness as well. Wa a'udhu bika. And there are many different narrations of this particular uh, hadith. But then the first one or the fifth one says, Wal bukhli wal jubni. And I seek refuge in you from being a miser or being greedy and also being coward. Wal jubni. Then he said, وَغَلَبَتِ الدَّيْنِ وَقَهْرِ الرِّجَالِ Being overwhelmed by deaths or being overwhelmed or being dominated by people like myself. These are just an example of eight different shackles that the Prophet, peace be upon him, spoke about. But then there are also other shackles that we invite upon ourselves, such as diseases. Because remember, there are two types of diseases, some that you can prevent and others that you cannot prevent. But the, by the end of the day, they would limit us. You talk about ignorance. You talk about poverty. You talk about cover, people who are spiritually bankrupt. You talk about pursuance of pleasure and pursuance of money. You speak about, and the diseases and these shackles can be so many, and there are so many of them out there. So what we would like to attempt in this program that we have is to address some of these shackles, identify them so that we are able to liberate ourselves from them. In other words, we can say some shackles are up here in our thoughts. Some shackles are down here, meaning that these are our attitudes. And some shackles would be revolving around our pleasure as well. And some shackles have to do with what we do to ourselves outside factors where we place ourselves in positions where we would end up enslaving ourselves to other than Allah, or at least we would be pinned down where we are not living life fully as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has intended for us. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to begin by stating the shackles that were identified in this beautiful prophetic statement. So for example, the Prophet peace be upon him begins by seeking refuge in Allah. And he says, Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from being in the state of ham and the state of hazan. In some narration it is said ham and gham, meaning that ham literally means anxiety or worry. And hazan means grief. And when there is that other narration that says gham, you say that anything that you're worried about, if you know the reason for it, that is called ham. Sometimes people are just worried and they do not know what the reason is. In Arab we have a different word for it and that is gham. Like we say ghyum for example, clouds. In English people would even speak and they would say that I am feeling very cloudy today. In other words, you're saying that I am... I am feeling a bit bluish today. I am feeling um, this anxiety. I am worried, but I am not sure what it is that I am worried about. But by the end of the day, here is what remains. And that is the idea of liberation is a personal responsibility. We choose to be free. At the beginning of every day, we make that decision. And that is, how free do I want to be today? That takes honesty and it takes a lot of courage. Identify the shackles that are holding you down and determine that at the beginning of every day I am going to liberate myself of these shackles and I am going to be a free man or a free woman from now on. With this, we come to the conclusion of this part of our program hoping that you would join us for next time as well. This is Yasser Fazaga saying Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.